In this nugget, we're going to walk through the process of configuring log shipping to have a standby copy of our database living on another instance of SQL Server for disaster recovery purposes. We're going to step it up a notch here with our final section here in 70-764 on disaster recovery and high availability. Up to this point throughout the course, we've been working on a single instance of SQL Server, SQL Nug. We're now introducing SQL 2 Nug into the mix, hosting its own separate instance of SQL Server. And we also have a domain controller here, DC Nug, that is hosting NuggetLab.com, our domain, and tying everything together. DC Nug is also going to act as our file server and our monitor server for log shipping. We're still going to do all of our work here on SQL Nug. I just wanted to give you the big picture here that we do have three machines in our lab environment for these last remaining modules. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to SQL Nug. So our goal for this demonstration is to take a database that's living here on SQL Nug, configure log shipping so there's a warm copy of it living over on SQL 2 Nug. So let's head into SQL Server Management Studio here, where we have a connection to our local instance of SQL Server and a connection to our instance over there on SQL 2 Nug. If we check out the databases here on SQL Nug, it's the databases we've been working with here. We're going to be working with NLDB here in this nugget. And over on SQL 2 Nug, we currently have no databases. Now, NLDB is also currently empty. There are no tables at all in this database. So that's our first task here is to get a table with some data inside of it. So we're going to create a very simple table here called the best table ever with, uh, with some columns inside of it. Let's go ahead and do that first here. Just verify that was indeed created. There it is. And now let's add a record into it. This will just add a single record into that table. All right, so we have a table. We have a record inside of it. Now it's time to configure log shipping. And we can do that by right-clicking on your target database. You can either head into the properties of the database or a nice shortcut here is to head into tasks and choose ship transaction logs. That'll take us into the property pages and plan us right on the transaction log shipping page. Here we're going to check, enable this as the primary database in a log shipping configuration here on SQL Nug. And the first thing you want to do here is configure your transaction log backup, the locations where they live and the schedule that they'll run on. So we can click on this button here. And the first thing we need to do is specify where those backups are going to live. We have two options here. We can either choose a network path, which is the easiest and recommended configuration, or a local path. Keep in mind there are a couple of prerequisites that you'll need to ensure in order for this to work. Number one, you'll need to grant read and write permission on this directory on this local machine to the SQL Server service account of this primary instance. And you'll need to grant read permission to the proxy account for the copy job for the SQL Server agent service. More on that here in a little bit. Again, we're going with the simple configuration here. We're uh, having DCNUG act as our file server. And I actually have File Explorer open down here. You'll notice I have a share exposed there on DC Nug. So this is going to be our path right here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that to the clipboard and paste it right there. So this is the location where the transaction log backups of our primary database will get stored. And then our secondary instance will pull those down via the copy job into a local repository that it'll use for the restore process on that secondary instance. So we're good here. You also have some parameters here for uh, deleting files older than a specific amount of time and alert if no backup occurs within a specific amount of time. So we'll leave the defaults there. This will be the name of the backup job that it'll create in SQL Server Agent. And we can also put this on its own schedule. And we're going to do that here. Let's turn this down to how about five minutes. So now transaction log backups are going to take place every five minutes here for our primary database on our primary instance. You can also set up backup compression here. We'll leave the default and hit OK. Next up, we need to configure our secondary databases. And we do so by specifying one or more SQL Server instances that will host that secondary database. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Add button here, which will take us into yet another dialog where we start by hitting this Connect button. Our secondary instance here is going to be SQL 2 Nug. So we'll go ahead and connect to that. And now we have a couple more things to configure. Our first tab is all about initialization. This database needs to exist on your secondary instances before transaction log backups can be applied. So that's what this tab is all about. And we have three options here. Number one, it should generate a full backup on the fly. As soon as we're done configuring log shipping, it'll do this automatically and restore it. The second option here is if you already have a backup that you want to use, then you can choose this and browse to that backup location. And our third option here is if you already have that database living on those secondary instances, then we can essentially skip initialization. Now, we do not 
have that database living over there on SQL to Nug, nor do we have an existing backup file. So this is going to be our only option here, the first one. You also have some restore options for both these first two options here, which allows you to specify a new location for both your data and log files. We don't need to do that. We're good. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel. And that's it for initialization. Next up is the copy files tab. And this is where we're going to configure the location on our secondary instance for where those backups are going to get pulled down to. Those backups, in our case, living in our file share over there on DCNUG. And we can also configure the schedule here for our copy job. And just to show you where that location is going to be, I'm going to flip over to SQL to NUG here. Here it is. I've got a backups directory in the Nugget Lab directory. And then this is our DC NUG SQL data. So again, the backups are going to get stored here. And when that copy job kicks off, they're going to get pulled down to the local machine here. All right, so let's head back over to SQL NUG. And let's go ahead and specify that location. C colon whack, Nugget Lab whack, backups. Oh, not backups. Backups. <laughs> there we go. Let's also modify the schedule of our copy job here so it runs every five minutes. All right, there we go. Now, our final tab here is for the restore process. We have a couple of options here. The database state is the big one. The default here is no recovery mode, which means the database will be inaccessible. It's purely there for the disaster recovery purposes, and we can fail over to it if something bad happens to our primary database. We can also specify standby mode, which is what we're going to do here. That will leave the database in a read-only state. So users can still perform read operations in this database. We can point their reporting applications to this. But the problem here is, of course, that users will be in the database. So this could cause problems with our restore job, which is why we have this checkbox right here. So this will disconnect any users in the database so it won't interfere with that restore process. You have a couple of other options here for just delaying the restoring backups at least a number of minutes or specifying uh, to send an alert to trigger an alert if no restore occurs within a specific amount of time. And it'll automatically create this alert job as well. I'll show you that in a little bit. And finally here, we can work with the schedule for the restore job itself. Let's also push this one down to five minutes. All right, that looks good. And we are all configured. We hit OK here. We'll talk about monitoring. We've got a separate nugget for this, so we'll configure this one in a future nugget. But this looks good. Log shipping is now configured. Once we hit OK, it'll just take a second here to perform that backup, restore it, save all this configuration, create those SQL Server agent jobs. We're done. We can hit close. And look at this. Over on SQL 2 Nug, we now have our standby copy of NLDB. And because we did leave it in standby mode, we should be able to get into the database, look at that table, and verify that our column is indeed in here. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Just verify. There it is. Perfect. So we've got data in there. We've got a warm standby copy ready to go. Let me show you a few other things here. Let's first take a look at our primary instance. We'll expand SQL Server Agent, expand jobs. There is your backup job. There is the alert. And if we head down here to SQL 2 Nug, we'll see the same thing, except we're going to have an extra job down here. We have the copy job, the restore job, and also an alert. Now, in the real world, you will want to modify these alerts, add operators to them to send notifications to them so you'll stay on top of anything that happens on either side, either the backup or the copy or restore side. But this looks good. Let's test it out now. What we're going to do is add a record here into our primary database here, NLDB on our primary server. And what we should see is within five minutes, that transaction log backup will occur. It'll get copied over to the secondary server and then restored down here on our standby copy. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this insert statement. We'll execute it, and that'll add the new data record here into the NLDB database. So it's currently inside of this database, but not in this database. We just have to wait a minute for all those jobs to kick off, and that will synchronize these databases. Now, while we're waiting, I'm going to head over here to SQL 2 Nug, and what we're going to see is both of these directories are up. We'll know when these jobs kicked off, and by the way, look at that. There's that initial full backup that it needed to take. But what we'll see is after five minutes, the transaction log backup will occur here, It'll get copied over to here and then restored onto that secondary database. All right, I am back. And I gave it about 20 minutes here. And look what happened. Our backup job kicked off every five minutes. Our copy job kicked off every five minutes, which means our restore job should have kicked off every five minutes as well. And the result is we should have that record now in our secondary database. So I'm going to flip back over to SQL Nug here. And let's open up the table here inside of our secondary database. I'll right click, we'll choose select top 1000 rows, and look at that, that record made it over. You can also look at the history of all your jobs to see when they kicked off, 
and if they succeeded and I'll show you other ways to monitor it again here in a future nugget so that's log shipping in a nutshell one of those tried and true SQL Server features that's been around for a very long time and it's a very easy to use easy to configure disaster recovery solution in this CBT nugget we covered the steps for configuring and using log shipping I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing